Oh hey, I'm Mark, a professional artist, art teacher, a bald person, and today we're going to learn how to pick the best colors for your art. 2D, 3D, any art. Colors is something that scare a lot of people. They used to scare me too. But in a couple of minutes from now, you should have a great idea of how to go about choosing them and not randomly logically i'm going to show you some of my best tips but not without anything in return i'm not that easy all right let's get started all right when it comes to color the amount of theory to cover is massive and just as an example the classes on the topic from my art school program span a couple hours obviously what i can teach in the context of a short youtube video is more limited but i came up with three tips slash notions that will make a really big difference if you start to follow them think of this as a quick guide to get you started exploring the world of colors <clears throat> this tutorial also works really well paired with my shading tutorial i posted a few weeks back so have a look at that if you're interested there's a link in the top right corner of the screen and down below so today i'll be slapping some colors on this drawing here but it could literally be anything and the logic would still apply it would even work to design the rooms in your house too now the first tip and by the way the tips are in no particular order so they're all important don't skip but the very first thing and that is something that a lot of people never really think about but it is to have a plan going into this any project that you tackle there should be an objective behind it your plan should be to use colors in a way that will reinforce your point of emphasis for whatever project you're tackling for example in my case here what what would you think my point of emphasis is when it comes to characters most of the time it's going to be their faces and this is just something that's kind of hardwired in our brain you know what is the first thing that you look at when you meet somebody new you look at their faces right you're not going to stare at their boots unless they have some really interesting boots <laughs> but yeah meeting somebody is going to result in some sort of interaction and normally our glance is going to go to the face first now if it's a big environment and you have characters in there or maybe the characters are going to be the point of emphasis or maybe you have like a big structure in there which will be the emphasis it's just whatever you feel is the most important that you would want people to look at first and definitely not miss so in my case here well i want obviously the attention to be focused in this area so this is going to be my point of emphasis and the only thing that you really have to keep in mind when trying to pick a color to reinforce that point of emphasis is to always choose the colors that stands out the most now standing out doesn't mean that it's the most the brightest or it's the most saturated it's just the one that stands out the most from the others so if all your colors are super saturated well it might be the color that is not as saturated if all your colors and values are really dark well then it might be that one color that is brighter than the other ones or if you have just you know blue everywhere well it might be that that red dot on our forehead that stands out the most so first very very important make sure that you have a plan what are you trying to feature here so let's try it real quick well with the colors on now did you notice where did your eye go first probably in this area right once again i'm definitely cheating here i'm using the brightest most not brightest the most vivid colors of them all red red is the color that really really excites the eye and so of course it's a great color to use in and around your point of emphasis and this is something that you'll see me do a ton all the time next i have my point of emphasis i have my plan i want to focus the air, the attention here next what colors do i choose because for one color to stand out i need a number of colors but how do i go about choosing every single one of them well that's where color harmonies come into play color harmonies are basically recipes for colors it's a set of colors that when you arrange them together in any kind of way it usually will look pretty good and of course there are many many more than the two here that i have but those are my favorites so complementary colors 
and triads. Really quickly, complementary colors will be colors that are opposite on the chromatic circle. In this case, you know, the chromatic line. But imagine that this is like a circle. So if you were to select like yellow, well, the opposite of that would be blue. Of course, this is a little bit easier to see if you have, you know, a painting software that actually has a chromatic circle instead of a box like this in Photoshop. And then the triads, well, it'll be very similar, but it will be at three equal points on the chromatic circle. So instead of talking about it, let me show you a really cool website that you might know already. But if you don't, it is very useful. And that would be color.adobe.com. So if you jump on here, you'll see that you have a nice little tool here that allows you to create a bunch of different palettes based on different color harmonies. So the ones that I've been talking about, triads and complementary colors. So I'd highly recommend that you jump in here and you know start to play around with these. And the main reason why I'm using only those two is because they are kind of easy to understand and they usually look very good, even if you kind of mess them up. So complementary colors here, you know, you can only think of two colors really. Uh, they're just giving us five here so that we get a more, more complete, richer palette. But really, you can just think of it as being two different colors on the opposite side of the chromatic circle. And real quick, also you can, uh, can actually discover different ones. So some people do save their own and you can load up like an image and have um, have this little app here, kind of extract the color the colors um, to create a different color palette. Pretty cool. Anyways, if we go back here to triads, maybe you'll be able to spot which one I used. Oh, there we go. Triads with red, blue and yellow. So the main take away from this here, this little app is that you grab your three colors here. So, you know, those would be like a, the blue here, the, the reds and the yellow. And what I would recommend is that you saturate them all to maximum saturation. And then you choose one, one that you want to be the leader. And the leader, of course, is going to be the one found most around the point of emphasis. So in this case, well, my main color, you can probably tell, is the red. And so this is why I have the little red thing on our forehead, reddish hair. And what I would then do is desaturate the other colors just a little bit, but they're not, they're not competing for saturation. You want the main color to be the star of the show, like it's the main actor in the movie. And then the other two colors, or the other color in the case of a complementary color harmony, you want them to be the secondary character, like the sidekick, not as important. It's still important because you have no harmony unless they're all there, but the secondary colors here, like the blue and the yellows, will be for things that don't need to stand out as much. In this case, the body and the background here. So if we go with complementary colors real quick, I'm going to go ahead and select the green here and purple as a complementary color. And now I get to pick which one is going to be the leader. So let's go with the green. So what I'm going to do is leave the green the way it is. I mean, you can still saturate a little bit if it doesn't look, if it doesn't look good to you. And for the purple, this one we're going to really knock down to something like this. And then in this case, you know, if you look at this quickly, of course, our eyes all go to this one is just the one that excites our our eyes the most it stands out the most it makes a good point of emphasis now of course so far i'm only talking about colors right so i haven't mentioned values or anything like that but then let's say that saturation is not enough maybe those colors you know you don't like them that much maybe you want a little bit more variation in the values well you can do exactly the same with values i would still always desaturate the secondary colors so that doesn't change but on top of that in addition what you can do to really really knock down the secondary colors is uh, well reduce their values as well and the only thing that this will do is help feature the main color even more but yeah anyways this is what color harmonies are all about so like i said they are a recipe right recipes work and just like anything that you're trying to learn it's always best to follow the recipes for a little while until the, until you get used to them until you understand the underlying, you know, theory, the logic behind all those colors. And then of course, after that, you can deviate as much as you want. You can go crazy with your colors, but it's always more risky. I will say that color harmonies is something that I always keep in mind myself. I will deviate sometimes, but they work so well that I still proudly use them. All right. And then uh, moving on to the last point here color temperature so talking about warm color versus cool colors warm colors are going to be those that remind you of 
anything that is warm. Yellow, for example, reminds you of the, the color of the sun, maybe. A nice warm light, that's, that's a warm color. Then you have cooler colors like ice, like water. And then you'll have like this blue color here. That's a cool color. Hey! But of course, it's always relative. So you can have two different blues and one of the blues will be a warmer blue, like something that has a little bit more yellow in it, like this turquoise color. Then you could have a different blue right next to it that is cooler, but both colors still blue. And so it's always going to be a relationship between two colors. Which one takes up the role of the warm colors? Which one takes up the role of the cool colors? And I mentioned this particularly for when you're shading your art. But here we can look at the top of the thigh. It looks pretty warm, right? So nice, nice warm yellow. And then as we transition to the shadows, then this color here starts to lose a lot of intensity, a lot of warmth. As it transition towards the blue of the wall back there, it almost takes up a little bit of the blue itself. Very, very little, just a bit. But still, now we have this range of colors. So we have warmer, warmer colors here under the light and then cooler colors in the shadows. And you only are able to get something like this if you change the colors when you're drawing. So if you choose a warm color here, all right, we're gonna start with that. And then as you transition to the shadows, you're not gonna just darken the color. So you're not gonna go straight down here to make the color darker. That's not gonna look that good. Instead, move towards a cooler color. The coolest color will be blue, will be on the opposite side of the chromatic circle. So you go green. And when you use those two different colors, a warm color, and a cool color to create your gradients like this, to create your shading, you get a much richer result. Once again, the things to remember when it comes to color temperature is to always try and use warmer colors for things that represent a light or areas that are lit. And for anything that you shade, don't use a single color. Always use a balance of warm versus cool colors. So warm highlights and cooler shadows. Once again, you cannot just select the same color and add more black to it, that's not gonna work. You also have to shift your colors and go towards a cooler color as you transition into the shadows. Let me tell you, if you follow those three things religiously every single time, your coloring should look pretty good. And not only that, but now that you know this, now that you know what to look for, you'll also be able to spot it in other people's art or when you watch a movie or a TV show, whatever. Anything artistic, always makes sure to include these things. Those are universal, it works for absolutely everything, and it is everywhere. If you've never played with colors before, well, now you have some guidelines to get started. And as you can see, it's not that complicated. Of course, there's many, many, many more things that we haven't, you know, we haven't talked about, but these three are significant. If you do them well, it will work. Hell, even if you don't do them that well, it will still look much better than if you weren't following anything. And let me know if you use this method to, to color your art. Tag me on Instagram, Twitter. I always, always try to repost or to share in my stories the various, uh, the various things that you guys tag me in. And of course, just about this tutorial, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask them down below. If you also have suggestions for future tutorials, let me know as well. I will say that probably the majority of the tutorials that I've made so far were suggestions from you guys. So yeah, keep them coming. Practice every day. And oh wait, there was one more.